الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة ثم يتوبون من قريب فأولئك يتوب الله عليهم وكان الله عليما حكيما صدق الله العظيم Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters and the esteemed listeners out there and the viewers There is a verse in the 10th juz in Surah At-Tawbah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله Verily the count of the months إن verily عدة the count شهور months عند الله In the knowledge of Allah إثنا عشر شهرا it is twelve يوم خلق السماوات والأرض From the very inception of the creation منها أربعة حرم Four out of these twelve months are sacred Four out of these 12 months are sacred and three out of them are mutawaliyat. They are in succession. Dhil Qa'da, Dhil Hijjah and Muharram and then is Rajab which is the month preceding the month of Sha'ban. فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not oppress yourself in those months by committing a crime. فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not, uh, do not oppress yourself do not harm yourself uh, in these months uh, specifically and generally in all the months so we learn two things quickly and that's the beginning of my talk number one when a person commits a crime he or she is harming themselves you are not harming Allah in any way Allah speaks about the arrogant brother in the tale of Kahaf two brothers uh, who had inherited wealth and one was pious, obedient, generous, obliging, a believer. The other one was haughty and arrogant. Allah says, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ He entered his orchard in a proud and an arrogant way because further in the Quran it mentions, فَقَالَ لَهُ صَاحِبُهُ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَيْ يُفَاخِرُهُ Jalalain interprets yuhawiruhu as yufakhiruhu. He was boastful. He was uh, arrogant about it. Allah said, ظالمٌ لِنَفْسِ He was harming himself. So that's the first message, my brother, my sister. When you do something wrong, you only harm yourself. You cannot harm Allah in any way. Allah is beyond being harmed, just like Allah is beyond being benefited. Allah cannot be benefited, nor can Allah be harmed in any way. In... Uh, بيان القرآن عند ذس آية it is mentioned دل على أن المعصية في الأزمنة المباركة ويقاس عليها الأمكنة المتبركة أشد قبحا so we learn a very very profound lesson what's the lesson we learn فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم in these sacred months specifically and generally in all the months don't commit a crime دل على أن المعصية في الأزمنة المباركة في الأزمنة المباركة ويقاس عليها الأمكنة المتبركة أشد قبحا We learn from this that to commit a crime and a sin is always bad, wrong, evil, undesirable but it becomes more heinous and repugnant if you were to perpetrate that crime on a sacred day, on a blessed day and the logic can be extended to noble locations as well so as we, inch, as we inch closer to Ramadan, if I can seize the moment and uh, even on this uh, blessed night, uh, the 15th night of Sha'ban, the first thing we can do is vow not to commit sin. 
you know, ideally engage in worship, ideally engage in worship. And here also I want to touch because I'm just having a, uh, um, you know, a, a flash of this thought and I read it in Tanwirul Adhan in the second volume where the ulama say that one type of following your ego within, within deen. You see, one is you following your ego when it comes to the disobedience of Allah. And then one is you following your ego within the acts of worship. Like one of my teachers used to tell us, after Maghrib was time to learn your kutub and do your takrar and do your mutala'ah, he said, this is not the time to do your revision of your Quran and your muraja'ah. As much as that is important, it's imperative, it is essential, it is noble, it's meritorious. But the devil ideally wants you to do this and fall short and deficient in other things. Ideally, uh, allocate and assign another time for it. Assign another time for it. So it's mentioned in Tanwirul Adhan, and we need to get the balance right here, that uh, Ittiba'ul Hawa, and listen to this very carefully, Ittiba'ul Hawa, Al-Musara'atu ila nawafil al these are very, very pertinent words. He said that often when it comes to the acts of worship, al musaraatu ila nawafil al khayrat. The devil will spur you on, and I consciously calculated to say this here because probably at the face value you're going to wonder what I'm saying. But he's going to give you this motivation to excel in optional, which is noble, great, and awesome, meritorious. But what not at the cost of becoming deficient in the obligatory and the, the, the compulsory actions. And unfortunately, this has become the norm in many things. You will find some people will engage in prolonged adhkar, which is great. It is great. But when you look at their further salah, it's haphazard. It's quick. It's not, it's not in an ideal way. So we need to focus on the optional, but not at the cost of being deficient in the execution of that which Allah has made mandatory upon us. So the first thing we say from the ayah, Dalla ala anna al ma'asiya fi al azminat al mubaraka on blessed nights, the least we can do is don't sin. Just, just, just stay away from sin. And, and you know what? Again, on that note where sometimes the devil comes off on a good note. Hakimul Umma rahimahullah used to say, in your social gatherings, don't even talk good of people. Don't even talk good of people because that's the doorway and the gateway of the devil to get you into ultimate gossip. So you start off on a good note. Yeah, this guy is amazing. He's got great feet. Wonderful. So he's great. Yeah, okay. What you're speaking good about? Okay, I'm part of the discussion. And gradually from there, he takes you into another point. And, and uh, Imam Ghazali has made mention about this in great detail, right? Uh, when, you, when you want to see your, your, your ego and, and it is delaying you in responding to that what Allah has told you. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ نَفْسَكَ الْمَائِلَةَ إِلَىٰ طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ هِيَ النَّفْسُ الْأَمَّارَةُ بِالسُّوءِ وَقَدْ انْتَهَضَتْ مُطِيعَةً لِلشَّيْطَانِ اللَّعِينِ لِيُدَلِّيَكَ بِحَبْلِ غُرُورِهِ إِلَىٰ كَيْدِ الْهَلَاقِ Right? That the devil comes in a very, very systematic way. So you, you start on the pretext, on the premise of praising people, but ultimately where you go. So even in the month of Ramadan, and even وَيُقَاسُ عَلَيْهَا الْأَمْكِنَةَ الْمُتَبَرَّكَ People ask, I'm going for Umrah, I'm going for Hajj. I, my first advice is stay away from wrong. Stay away. Once we did an Umrah with some friends, and it was nice, it was a very casual, good, nice, good friends. It was a quick Umrah, four or five days. And uh, they, you know, respectfully made me in charge of the group. And I said, listen, we've got just one rule here we're going to do. We're going to have it easy. We're going to have it relaxed. We're going to be, you know, engaging in ibadah and have a good understanding. But one key thing here, there will be no gossip whatsoever. And if anybody starts it, the next one will respectfully tell him, just stop it there because we are only four amongst us. Uh, the second message that I want to say is that... Tie it up with the blessed night of Sha'ban and the sacred month of Sha'ban and the days approaching Ramadan and also give it a touch and a spin to the COVID-19 is the urgency of hastening towards virtue. 
So we don't have time. It's late. It is late. That's the reality. Imam Muslim rahimahullah makes mention of a narration that Uqba uh, ibn Amir radiallahu anhu says, Sallaytu, sallaytu al-asra khalf al-nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I performed the Asr prayer behind the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After Asr was over, qama musri'an. He stood up in great haste. Takhatta riqab al-nas. He then moved his way through the rows and he went. Fadakhala fi ihda hujarin nisa'ihi. Then he entered into one of the apartments of his honorable consorts. Fadjazi'a al-nasu bisur'atihi. People went into panic, anxiety, given the hasty nature of the Prophet So he like completed his prayer, made salam, stood up in haste. He went forward, got into the house. This was unusual. This was strange. And they were like, what happened? The, the narration says clearly they went into panic, looking at the hasty nature of the Prophet When he returned, they obviously observed it. They obviously observed it. So he said that uh, the reason why I went in such panic for which it alarmed you and cons uh, uh, you know, concerned you is I recall that I had a piece of gold at home. I had a piece of gold and I quickly wanted to get this out and give it in charity. So the purpose and the motivation of my hasty nature was a recollection. Allah forgive, we'll be in prayer and we have a thought, we'll get home to make sure it's still there. You, you know, like, hey, in Salah, did I leave that money? And then we have that. And, and sometimes I even tell people that you started your prayer and then now you're having this thought, do I have my phone or I don't have it? I tell the people in today's time, rather move your hand and see if you got it. So once you got it and you felt it, hopefully the remaining part of your prayer will have a greater focus. Then trying to resist the thought and then your entire prayer is consumed by uneasiness. That's the, that's the brutal truth in our context. That's the brutal truth in our context. But the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the word is Musri'an. And that, that's what I want to touch on. Musri'an, haste, quickly. Now, it's important to understand that when we speak about being quick and swift and hastiness, we are exhorting the people to haste, to be hasty towards the virtue and not hasty in the performance of the virtue. So start quickly with the action, but don't perform the action hurriedly. Arrive at the masjid early, but don't perform salah in, in haste. There's a big difference. And if you were just to have a cursory glance, just a cursory glance over the text of the Quran, then you will find there's exhortation of virtue coupled with impressing upon you to do it quickly. My brother, my sister, you are seeing how the current uh, circumstances has, uh, you know what, dashed all our plans, right? I thought this, I thought that. I, I, I cannot, for the sake of myself, recall whenever on the 15th night of Shaban that I was not giving a talk in a masjid. It's the first time that I can recall probably from the years that Allah has privileged me to speak. And I ask Allah never to deprive me or deprive anyone of the bounties that Allah has given us. And the way we preserve the bounty that Allah has given us is we use it for the cause of Allah. Right? Allah says, If Allah has made you literate, then use your skill to enhance people. And what did Sayyidina Ali radiallahu say to Jabir? فَحْذَرْ زَوَالَ الْفَضْلِ يَا جَابِرْ فَحْذَرْ زَوَالَ الْفَضْلِ يَا جَابِرْ وَأَعْطِ مِنْ دُنْيَاكَ مَنْ سَأَلَهَا فَإِنَّ ذَا الْعَرْشِ جَزِيلُ الْعَطَى يُضَعِّفُ بِالْحَبَّةِ أَمْثَالَهَا O oh, Jabir, let it not be that Allah seizes and snatches and takes back what He gave you. And the only way to keep this rhythm going is you continue giving. You continue giving and it will continue coming from the Almighty. So Allah says, فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Hasten towards the remembrance of Allah. And let me also see something that I can mention now, uh, you know, in the context again of the current situation. And I read this in Ma'riful Quran, that there was a person who was innocently incarcerated. And every Friday in his cell, to the best of his ability, he would adorn the best of clothing. And then he would take a swift walk to the door of his cell. And he would say, oh Allah, you have instructed us on Juma to hasten to the masjid for your remembrance. And I don't have any muscle to do anything beyond this, but it is within my reach to walk till the door of my cell. So he would do this on a regular basis till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him deliverance, which means 
that even if by circumstances you are unable to get to the masjid of, of, for Juma during this lockdown period, nothing stops you from, from preparing yourself for Juma, from taking the ghusl, tatayyab, applying the fragrance and preparing yourself and taking few steps within your own environment, um, you know, to try and revive that to the best of your ability. So Allah says, Fas'aw which means, you know what, walk, bristly, right? Uh, make sa'i. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا The one who intends akhirah, and he toils for it as he ought to toil. Then Allah says, سَابِقُوا سَابِقُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ So, compete with one another, hasten with one another. Then Allah says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Run. Now, when you look at the noble companions, the passion of hastening in virtue was just of a different level. And I, want to, I, I really want to drive this point strongly. I want to drive this point strongly. The verse that I recited is a verse of the fourth juz, Surah An-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةِ إنما التوبة على الله للذين يعملون السوء بجهالة. Surely Allah will accept the repentance of those who perpetrate wrong be jahala out of foolishness. Jahala here is not in the context of ignorance, right? Where you didn't know and you committed it. No, rather it means, and this is again a beautiful reflection is mentioned in Bayan al Quran. سمى الله ارتكاب ما لا يليق بالعاقل جهالة وإن كانت مع العلم والعمد سمى الله ارتكاب ما لا يليق بالعاقل جهالة Allah has defined the perpetration of a sin as an act of ignorance, even if you were conscious and it was calculated and deliberate, but it doesn't take away the fact that that was stupidity, foolishness, naivety and insanity, because how can you want to disobey Allah? So Allah says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Allah will accept the tawbah of those لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ and then they make tawbah quickly, swiftly, soon. What is meant by soon here? Unanimously, the scholars of tafsir say, before you die. And they speak of two things. One is the halat of ya's and one is the halat of ba's. Ya's is when you reach a point where there's no hope of recovery, but the events of the year after have not been un unveiled to you as yet. So person is close to the throes of death, but he hasn't seen the malaika. He's not in sakarat. Up till that point of yas, your tawbah will be accepted. Then it comes the stage of ba's. Ba's is where he's slipping away from this world or she's slipping away. And you now observe the things of, of akhirah where ghaib is now becoming mushahada. At that time, unfortunately, tawbah will not be accepted. There is yet another verse in the ninth Jews in Surah Al-Anfal and it has such a relevance to drive the same message. That's that my first message I said that the best way of abstaining from, uh, you know, to win the closeness of Allah is abstain from sin and, and perform your obligatory actions with passion and diligence, with pride and, and, and commitment. And uh, the second message we are impressing on one and all is it's late. Time is running out. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, and understand this ayah, what, 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 what an amazing application to the current crisis. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, o you who believe, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul. Oblige and comply to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ida da'akum. When they invite you, lima to that yuhyikum. That when you obey Allah and His Nabi, then in obedience to Allah and His Nabi, there is life. There is life in it. There's meaning. There's value. There's no doubt about that here, that the life of a believer has, has a very beautiful rhythm, a very beautiful cycle, a very beautiful, it, it just has its own unique touch to it. Uh, you know, uh, many people will be fasting tomorrow and probably many people have already commenced their fast in Shaban. You, you're kind of having an, an early ambience of that Ramadan flavor. Today in the kitchen at iftar time, it was again a Ramadan buzz and a Ramadan. It's a very beautiful, it's very serene, it's very wholesome. It's, it's so amazing 
that's just the external reflection of, of the beauty uh, of, of uh, the obedience of Allah. So Allah refers to obedience to his commands as a type of hayat, life, life. There's meaning to it. Lima yuhyikum. Now, listen to this verse that follows thereafter. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِ Let me give you a verbatim translation, 9th Surah Al-Anfal. Remember and understand that verily Allah intervenes between a human and his heart. Allah intervenes. There are two tafsirs given to this. I'll share one here to move on and, and discuss other aspects. Allah intervenes, that means hasten in the performance of good because Allah can bring about circumstances where you won't able to execute your vision. And today it is just external. Sometimes it's an illness. Sometimes it's a death. Sometimes it's a tragedy. Sometimes it's local and this time it's global. So just don't delay. Just don't delay. When the Prophet ﷺ exhorted the companions in a particular campaign regarding the width of Jannah, when you say Sahaba didn't want to delay, then this was it. You had Umair radiallahu anhu who had a date in his hand and he's hearing the exhortation of the Prophet ﷺ and he says, لَإِنْ حَيِّتُ حَتَّى آكُلَ مِنْ تَمَرَاتِ هَذِهِ إِنَّهَا لَحَيَاتٌ طَوِيلَةٌ Umair, you want to delay your entry into Jannah by biting on this day, chewing it, digesting it, and then going? He dropped it, and then he went forward. Rakdan illallahi. Rakadha yarkudhu. To strike your heel. Urkudh bi rijlik. Urkudh bi rijlik. Allah Ta'ala told Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam, strike your heel, strike your heel. Hadha mughtasalun baridun wa sharab. A, a spring of water will gush forth. You can drink it and you can bath in it. Likewise, Allah speaks in the 17 Jews in Surah Al-Anbiya about the tyrant people. Falamma ahassu ba'sana idha hum minha yarkudun. إِذَا هُمْ مِنْهَا يَرْكُذُونَ لَا تَرْكُذُوا وَارْجِعُوا إِلَى مَا أُتْرِفْتُمْ فِيهِ وَمَسَاكِنِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُسْأَلُونَ So you were proud, you were arrogant, you were haughty, you thought the world of yourself. Suddenly when they seen some signs of our torment coming their way, فَلَمَّا when أَحَسُّوا they perceived بَأْسَنَا our torment إِذَا suddenly هُمْ يَرْكُذُونَ They were dashing, they, were, they had to flee. So it was told to them, La Turkudu, why you run? Why you moving away? You strong, you anchored, you buffered, you insulated, you fortified. Warujiru ilama utriftum fihi. Go back to the lap of luxury. Laallakum tus alun. So people can come and engage you and speak to you like they daily would speak to you. So he said, Rakdan ilallahi bi gayri zadin. Rakdan ilallahi bi gayri zadin. Illa tuqa wa amali ma'adi. I have nothing to offer but that I present myself to Allah. Rakdan ilallahi bi gayri zadin illa tuqa. But I fear Allah wa amalil ma'adi and preparation for the final hour and the final day. So Allah says in this verse that uh, oblige and comply. My brother, my sister, you want to give charity? Do it tonight. You want to donate something? Phone the people and make the commitment now. You want to co commence the memorization of the Quran? Start it now. Start it now. My message strongly is just see this exact this ayah. Remember Allah intervenes. And the second interpretation also has a common uh, twist to the, uh, the, the, the commentary as well. Is that they say, and this is mentioned in Ma'arif al-Quran, that Allah can turn your heart. In the first commentary, it's explained that your intention can remain, but external conditions can incapacitate you. And in the second commentary of this ayah is that uh, there's, there's no external things to deny you, but Allah takes away the ability or the passion or the inclination for the virtue. So either way, strike while, while it's hot. Either way, strike while it's hot, because this is the time. Tomorrow, I could probably want to, but external factors would deny me. All external factors will be conducive, but Allah will take that ability away from me. How many people? وَمَنْ فَاتَهُ التَّعْلِيمُ وَقْتَ شَبَابِهِ وَمَنْ فَاتَهُ التَّعْلِيمُ وَقْتَ شَبَابِهِ فَكَبِّرْ عَلَيْهِ أَرْبَعًا لِوَفَاتِهِ وَذَاتُ الْفَتَى وَاللَّهِ بِالْعِلْمِ وَالتُّقَى إِذَا لَمْ يَكُونَ لَا اِعْتِبَارَ لِذَاتِهِ Muhammad bin Idris al-Shafi'i said, the time to acquire knowledge is when you're young. And this is a motivation to the youth and not to create any sense of despondency for the elderly. 
وَمَنْ فَاتَهُ التَّعْلِيمُ وَقْتَ شَبَابِهِ And the one who lost the train and missed the boat, missed the boat of studying deen. My young brother, sister, whoever you are listening to me or viewing this program live, I urge and I implore you, you have this whisper, you have this desire. This is the message of Allah to you. Hasten and start it now. Start it now. How often I speak about this incident when I was in London and I was having a program and the program was commenced by a recit uh, recital of the Quran, which is pretty much the norm and it's great and awesome, but not by a young lad, not by a young lad. Uh, the Quran was recited by an elderly man in his late 60s, close to 70. The next day I had another program in South London. And lo and behold, the same man, weak, frail, came forward, mustered the courage, took the microphone on, and in his gruff voice, he read through. Curiosity got me like, why this? It's a great event. People have come from far and wide. I nudged the host and I said, what's this all about? He said, this man started memorizing the Quran at the age of 65. I seen it myself. Two years later, at that time, he had memorized 15 Jews. Two years later, I got there. And I was curious for another program, but I got in touch. I said, where's this man? He says he's completed 28 Jews of the Quran. The one who lost the opportunity. Oh man, look at the tukhayyul of the sha'ir. Look at the ta'bir of the sha'ir. Then say Allahu Akbar four times and perform a funeral prayer on him. Perform a funeral prayer on him. Physically, he might be alive, but spiritually, he's died. The beauty and the essence of a young man is piety and knowledge. If he's devoid of knowledge and bereft of piety, then there's no merit to any other qualities of his. There's not, my brother, you are seen at the moment, my sister, you are seen the one that has been. Uh, I'm thinking of the ayah. Kullu nafsim bima kasabat rahinatun ay marhunatun. Uh, everybody is marhoon today in their homes. They are mahboos. They are muqayyad. You, you have a palace or he has a hut. Everybody is indoors. He doesn't have the money. You have the money, but the item is not available. That's the world. So hasten in the performance of doing good. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can divert your mind. We know about Hiraqal. He expressed great admiration for the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَتَجَشَّمْتُ لِقَاءَهُ The hadith of Bukhari. لَتَجَشَّمْتُ لِقَاءَهُ أَيْ لَكَلَّفْتُ نَفْسِي I would really go through a lot of pain to meet him. But subsequently, when his nation, uh, you know, they, they rebelled against him and they revolted against him, then he ordered the doors to be bolted. And he says, no, no, I just wanted to, to test your confidence. I will never forsake the religion. I will never forsake. So when the time comes and the whisper is there, tap onto it, tap onto it, do it, do it. There will be no regrets. I share with you an amazing incident in this regard of, again, I, we, we've seen I, in my life, I mean, we've seen Eid shopping, pre-Eid, and then we've seen Christmas shopping. We've seen, uh, you know, Boxing Day shopping. I know in America, Canada, Boxing Day is, is the worst shopping. I've seen it. I was with my wife once in December and uh, we completed the event. And then obviously there's a real slash in, in, in prices. So uh, you get some real good quality stuff and winter is, is, is in its peak. So she, she wanted some jacket and some other things. So we said, okay, let's go. Lo and behold, I had never in my life seen such a shopping queue, such a buzz, how busy, how the malls were jumping. But I can say with safety, without fear of contradiction, what I witnessed pre-lockdown has surpassed my experience in every form of seeing a mall busy or queues that were long. There was this panic shopping, right? Panic shopping. It's time is running out. Time is running out. I need to stock up. My brother, my sister, time is running. The clock is ticking. We need to stock up in our actions. My sister, and I say this to the sister generally, but I address it to the brothers as well. If you have qadha fast, I urge you. I urge you because obviously women have a situation in Ramadan, etc. where um, they are unable to fast the entire month. And this is the system of the Almighty. Remember our mother Aisha radiallahu anha experienced her cycle in Hajj. And she became sad and the Prophet sallallahu comforted her. The hadith of Bukhari, this is something Allah has decreed for the daughters of 
daughters of Adam alayhi salam. So you have that accumulated fast. I'm saying do it now, my sister. Do it now, my brother. Uh, Allah has referred to Qiyamah as tomorrow. And some places Allah referred to Qiyamah as today. It's so quick. Yes. And some places Allah says they think it's far, but we know it's close. إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا In Surah Ma'arij in the 29 Jews, they perceive it to be remote and distant and we know it is close. And then Allah says, سَيَعْلَمُونَ غَادًا مَنِ الْكَذَّابُ الْأَشِيرِ Tomorrow they will know who's the liar and who's the mutakabbir and the arrogant person. And some places Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَضْحَكُونَ Today the believers will scoff at those that used to mock at them in this world. Allah says, فَالْيَوْمْ today. So that the message is that uh, stay away from sin. May Allah give me the ability. May Allah give you the ability and hasten in the performance of good deeds. The, the urge comes, the desire comes, create it, nurture it, nourish it, sustain it, move forward with it, develop it. Uh, Hafiz ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, the greatest benefit of good is not the reward, but that it will propel you to another good. And the greatest harm of sin is not the punishment, but that it will bring you closer to a more severe sin. So that's, 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 that's serious. So today you committed one crime. I know of a day, and I say this here just to encourage one and all. A brother had called me, and uh, I gave him a lot of hope. He cried in uh, an anonymous number, and I said, perfectly fine. And whoever calls me, we respect their anonymity. Because in Islam, there's no priesthood, there's no confession here. There's no confession. When people come home and they discuss their marital things, I always say, discuss that much which is relevant to the current crisis. Don't reveal more because I don't need to know it. I don't need to know it. So whatever is current and contemporary and I need to know to have a holistic understanding that I can impartially uh, arbitrate, you can bring those uh, dimensions to the fore. But let's not go uh, on, on, on a campaign of exposing each other and attacking the honor or character assassination. So he had called me and he said that uh, I committed zina. And then he started wailing and sobbing and crying. So I said, my brother, are you there? And he's just crying and crying. I, I told him, you know what? First thing, the Prophet وسلم, said, إِذَا صَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَتُكَ وَسَاءَتْكَ سَيِّئَتُكَ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنٌ That if your good deeds make you happy and your bad deeds make you sad, you're a believer, my brother. It is iman in you. A companion came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, I have such nasty thoughts. لَأَنْ أَكُونَ حُمَامَ لَأَنْ أَكُونَ حُمَامَ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ أَتَكَلَّمْ بِهِ Right? I would prefer being reduced to coal than verbalizing those things. He وسلم, said, ذَاكَ صَرِيحُ الْإِيمَان That's the narration of Sahih Muslim. Him. That's a sign of true faith because if it wasn't faith and it wasn't Iman, then those act, those thoughts would not be thoughts, they would have been actions. So now you're having these nasty thoughts, these evil thoughts, these wicked thoughts, these you know unpleasant thoughts. So this is a sign of Iman because that's the that's the limitation of the devil, right? In the 15 Jews in Surah Bani Israel, Allah says, Wastafziz man is minhum bisautik and incite whomsoever you wish with your voice. And voice here could either mean music or the indoctrination of the devil, the waswasa, alladhi yu waswisu fi sudur in nas. So I said, my brother, this is a sign of Iman. I comforted him in the sense that you're a believer because, see, we've been told, and we'll hear this from our pious predecessors, before committing a crime, think of the punishment of Allah. And after committing a crime, think of the mercy of Allah. If you think of the mercy of Allah before committing a crime, your minor will become major. And if you think of the punishment of Allah after committing a crime, your crime will take you to disbelief and despondency. So before committing a crime, think of the punishment of Allah. Oh, my Allah can take me to task. In the Rabbika la shadeed, the grip of your Lord is intense. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخْذَ الْقُرْآنَ Oh, my Allah can do this to me. My Allah can seize me. Oh, the earth can split. The earth can split. And this can happen to me. There was a brother who had once attended a talk of mine in New York, actually a scholar from New York, and he came to Toronto. And he shared this with me, and I just have a thought of it at this moment. Allah knows best why. And I say this in gratitude to Allah. And he says, I was going to a club and a pub, and it was a Saturday night, and we were friends. And somebody had sent me a link of one of your lectures on youth. And uh, so he actually drove down from New York to come and meet me. And really, I say this here in gratitude to Allah that the Ummah has thirst. Recently, I was in, in Botswana. In fact, I was just speaking to my good friend now before coming to the studios. Uh, when I went to Botswana, it's what, a hop over 45 minute flight at its best, four hour drive, five hour drive. 
I was so humble that one of my former students drove eight hours to attend the talk. The entire night through the, de uh, the, 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 the Kalahari Desert and he came through. Eight hours. I actually cried and I stood up and I said, I'm optimistic by your attendance. Hopefully Allah will accept me and forgive me. I flew and it was 45 minutes. And even if I had to drive, it was four hours. And he drove for eight hours. La ilaha illallah. So this man drove down, this young scholar drove down from New York. And he came to meet me and he said, I just want to share this thought with you. That I was on the way in New York, going to a club and a pub. And I had this here and, and I was having this battle in my heart, right? Because this is the life. This is the life. So remember, today we repent and we feel so rejuvenated and so, uh, you know, uh, spiritually recharged. Like, you know what? That's it. I've parted ways with the devil. I won't see you at all. But the devil takes a backseat very, very carefully. He takes a backseat very carefully and he's very, very calculated. He's very, very calculated in what he does. So... You know, you think that's it. In, in in future in my life, I won't even know how to spell sin. Never mind commit sin. You know, I've washed my hands off this thing completely. I'm done and dusted. And then he comes back with such aggression, with such aggression that you literally lose yourself totally. Uh, what did uh, Salma bin Dinar say? He said, min yawmin shamsu illa wa yuqbilu ala, il ala talib al -ilmi. Every day a fresh battle is fought. What they say in English, my brother, the most difficult thing of life is it's daily. You went to the gym, you had a great workout, right? You had a great workout. Next day, it's a new day. Start again. My, 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 my good son, Hamza, he, uh, you might be listening. So I, I've been, I've been uh, doing some exercises during these days at home. And uh, uh, mashallah, all my three boys are into their gymming and uh, they've been getting the mickey out of me. Abu, let's do this and do this here and squatting and lunges and, you know. So I, I've been trying, I've been trying. Oh, we're not going to do any demonstration here. Uh, and now the last three days, we had a gap. So today, just before I'm coming, he's telling me, Abu, you haven't done it. That's the challenge of life. It's so daily. It's so daily. Right? I, I don't like the, Okay, I don't want to use that example because it's not the best of examples. But anyway, life is so daily. Yesterday, you had a workout. Next day is a fresh day. Every day, a fresh battle is fought on the chest of, of, of uh, the son of Adam. Between his noble endeavors and wicked forces. Right? He says it in the context of a student of Deen, but you could uh, generalize the sentiments. Ma min yawmin illa wa yuqbilu ala talib al-ilmi ilmuhu wa hawa. The passion to study. Fa idha ghalaba ilmuhu hawahu kana yawmuhu yawma ghunmin lahu. And if his knowledge reigns supreme, and he suppresses and he stems his uh, evil desires, then he's victorious. And again, I'm having a flesh and I credit this to Allah and I urge those that are studying or doing something good. How often I think of the day and I have shared this to my parents and in particular my honorable dad, because I have a very vivid recollection of the day where probably 1992, I came home and I told my parents I'm done with my studies and I'm calling it a day. And I was concluded, I was, that's it, you know, done and dusted. There's no way I'm going back. I had my share, I'm, and it's, 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 it's a windy road. And I still remember my dad putting his hand around me and embracing me and comforting me. And my mom praying for me and giving me the motivation and the courage and the prayers. And both of them telling me, but hang on, there is a future ahead. Don't back off, don't back off. Allah's kept a future ahead for you. Allah's kept a future ahead for you. And I often think of my life, you know. And again, this is not to pontify that, that, that in Deen Allah has kept as a, as a kid growing up, I used to sometimes aspire to become a pilot and sometimes I used to aspire to become a traffic officer, right? Just because it kind of gives off a, a, a sense of authority as a child, you know, and then Allah brought the day without becoming a pilot. Allah took me across the globe and then there were security marshals to usher you into a program. And those were the unintended perks that Allah gave. And I don't have knowledge. I don't have I, my, 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 my wife and children are very frank with me and they say it openly, uh, you know, Abu, but I don't really see you study. How do you just go and speak? 
And I say, well, this is the du'as of our seniors and I don't have anything. I often say this year, if it wasn't a crime to mention your son, I would mention my son. But if I mention my son, it's another son. And I don't need more sons. Sometimes people mention their son in the name of humility, but they don't realize it's a son. No, you know, I, I'm, I'm nothing. I that, this. No, don't tell me this, my brother. Don't tell me this here. A person, the hadith is in Bukhari, right? Now my mind is digressing. But anyway, we're just saying this here. Oh, uh, we got enough time? So am I told. La ilaha illallah. The hadith is in Bukhari where a person uh, makes mention and it's referenced in the Quran as well. Uh, where a person says, a like, Sahabi radiallahu anhu, that a woman came to buy something. And when I seen her, and, and Ibn Kathir has opened up the, the, the narration in great detail. She entered the shop and she came to buy dates. So I said, I have more superior dates inside. And as she walked in, I was attracted to her and I could not resist myself and I fell upon her. I fell upon her, embracing her, hugging her, kissing her, etc. And uh, then, then she left and of course I was... <coughs> I was uh, regretful and remorseful. I was regretful and I was remorseful about what I did. So I came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. One narration said, I went to Umar radiallahu anhu. Look at Sahaba. They said, Ustur, satar Allahu alayk. Ustur, satar Allahu Don't tell me, don't tell me. No, no, I don't want to hear. No, wait, listen. No, 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 don't tell me. We want to probe it. The person wants to keep it a secret. We're the direct opposite. Hakim al Ummah says, when you give a, when you, when you give a gift, then give it secretly. And the person receiving the gift should receive it publicly. Oh, Jazakallah for the gift. Jazakallah for the gift. Here is the direct opposite. The person is coming and he says, Hey, brother, there's an envelope for you. Yeah, leave it there. Leave it there. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Direct opposite. Direct opposite. Right? I always tell people. So the etiquette is the one giving the gift, do it secretly. The one receiving it, make it known because it's a kind action. And he also has written that it is important to know who is, uh, you know, your benefactor. Someone who's given you something so that you know who you make dua for. These are, these are reformation of our mu'ashara. Our, uh, I'm having another ayah coming to mind, but let's, let me try and get back on to focus on this narration first. And then if time permits, we'll move on there. So... Um, he came to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr radiallahu said, Ustur, keep it a secret. Satar Allahu alayk, satar Allahu alayk. Let me share something today. Subhanallah, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to Allah. And this is again the prayers of my mom and my parents. Oh, la ilaha illallah. I was sitting in a hotel in Toronto and the late Junaid Jamshed was with me. And we had a long night discussion. Probably it's the first time I'm saying it live in any of my talks. I've shared it with my spouse. And uh, may Allah bless his grave with Noor. May Allah grant him a handsome abode in Jannah. Until today, I think of him. I think of him in the first class lounge. Because on that particular trip, we, 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 I don't know if it was the last we met in Canada. And after that, we didn't meet there. So that last memory kind of, you know, has an imprint on you. Uh, people recollect when so-and-so died, we were eating dinner or we were on the road. You know, it, it kind of just captures it with those emotions. So I was making wudu in the lounge and he walked in and, oh, wow, Junaid Bhai, Kya Hale, Tik Tak. And we started speaking. Then we offered salah and then um, we uh, boarded the flight and uh, uh, I, I had a complimentary upgrade from business into first. So I offered it to him. But he modestly declined and he went into business and then he said a joke and he said, well, I hope in Jannah when you get first class, you remember me. But after his death, I, I often say to myself and to him in my own thoughts, I said, Brother Junaid, Allah has already given you the first class. I don't know if I'm going to board the flight. We don't even know we're going to board the flight. We, we hope and wish may Allah take us with Iman. But anyway, on the note of conceal it. Don't, don't, don't probe the flaws of others. Well, why talk about it? Why talk? How clean is my slate? How clean is my slate? How clean is my slate? So uh, I still remember it. Uh, and it was a late night and he was sitting and I was asking him personal questions about his life of fame, music, etc. And the turn in his life and the toba in his life, etc. And uh, many things stood out. I'll just share two things. One relevant to what really prompted me to discuss and one on a different note. He said that, uh, you know, in my days, and this is, uh, you know, what they say, Samiatu Udunaya wa wa'ahu qalbi, in Arabic, like I heard it and I've captured it, uh, you know, uh, like with Taqid. 
He says, I remember an event in U.S. Was it uh, Dallas? But somewhere in the U.S. I performed and I did a show and we were both, I was speaking and he was uh, singing at the same event which happens in, in December in Toronto, uh, the Reviving the Islamic Spirit. So, uh, mashallah, it attracts a huge audience like 25,000 odd people, etc. So he says, I recall before my days of, of repentance and tawbah, I was performing at a show in, in the US and uh, then uh, a particular girl asked her father to have me over at the house. So those days my, my fees were just to make a presence at the house was $2,000, right? So that's not for the show, that just to make a presence to be there. Uh, may Allah bless the ulama for their humility and simplicity. They'll go everywhere and, 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 and accommodate everyone. And I, I'm not of that caliber, the true ulama of that caliber. Someone told my honorable ustad and my mentor, Hazrat Mawlana Sulaiman Sab, Hafidhahullah wa ra'a, that you are a scholar and you are the ulama and your people's sleep is, is uh, an act of worship. Subhanallah. He said such a profound thing. He said those whose sleep was worship, they have passed on. But our sleep, this benefit is definite that when we sleep in, we can't sin. So for us, Alhamdulillah, we just take it to that level that when we sleep in, that for that period of time, we away from sin. And Hakimul Ummah has also mentioned this year <coughs> that in, in Ramadan, one of the manners in which how fast protects you from sin is that in Ramadan, you read more Quran. So while you read in Quran, you're not sinning. While you're fasting, you're minimizing your, your wrong. Anyway, he said that I would then go to the house and I went to this particular girl's house because she wanted to show her peers that, you know what, I've got the man home. And this is what he told me personally. And uh, $2,000, money exchanges hands, but the event was so empty, so hollow, no, no feeling, no flavor, no excitement, nothing to it. And he said, now I would give a talk, I would come out in the path of Allah for three days, and I would do this and spend my own money. But the inner satisfaction that Allah would give me is just beyond description. And then the second thing that he mentioned, and I, it ties up with what I was saying, that don't expose anyone, don't ustur. The companion came to Abu Bakr, he said, listen, I kissed this woman. He said, don't tell me, don't tell me. Just, just keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. Like, I want to probe and pry. I want to probe and pry. Oh, we, we just don't know what's going to happen in Qiyamah, my brother. We just don't know. Remember Allah said in the Quran and Al-Bahr al-Muhit expounds on this. Man ja'a bil hasana. Allah didn't say the one who performs good. Allah says the one who brings his good with him when he dies. That's mentioned in Al-Bahr al-Muhid, Ja'a bi. So Allah didn't say, Man amila bil hasana. Allah said, Man ja'a. That means you need to, how often you get to the place, oh, you first in the queue, you at the embassy, but you forgot your passport. Right? You, you, you forgot your document, or you got there and you didn't bring your ID document. So you're there early, but it doesn't help. Allah says, I don't want to know what you performed. This is incorporated in the adoption of the expression of Ja'a bi. What did you bring? A woman would say, don't tell me how much you're earning, how much are you bringing to the table? So much is going in retirement, so much is going in your liabilities. By the time we come home, we're sitting with, you know what, a, a paltry amount or a trivial amount. Or it's pittance, it's a small amount, it doesn't get us anywhere. So he said, Allah has been extremely kind. Junaid rahimahullah, and, and we pray for him, may Allah let Allahumma uh, anzil ala qabrihi al-diyaa wa nur wa al-fushata wa surur May Allah let ease and goodness descend on his soul, rahimahullah. He said, during my life as a musician, and even after my life of tawbah, Allah gave me the ability that I never ever exposed anyone. Even in my dark days, even in my days of music, which was synonymous to vice. And, and many of my other colleagues in the music industry would get exposed for things that happen behind the scenes, right? It's, it's, it's almost now inseparable to uh, celebrities. Uh, the famous versus the infamous. Uh, famous slash infamous. So famous is the public, uh, infamous is behind the scenes. He said, even in my dark days, the nasty things that happened, which was synonymous and inseparable to the industry, many of my colleagues got implicated, but Allah always veiled me. Then he's telling me, May aapko uska raaz batao. You know, and his time, and then I can still, his kufi and topi was off, and he was walking, and we were chilled, and it was late night. May aapko uska raaz batao. And I actually have a tear in my eye. Uh, can I share the secret with you that nobody exposes you? I said, Yar, mume to pani aage, Junaid bhai. Like there's water in my mouth. Tell me, what's it? 
حسید میں نے کسی کا راز فاش نہیں کیا اللہ نے میرے اوپر پردہ ڈال دیا آئی نیور ایور گاسپ اور ایکسپوز اور ڈائیول بلٹل اینی ون اینڈ بیکاز آف دیٹ اللہ آل ویز کنسیلڈ مائی رانگ سو ایزی یت سو ڈفیکلٹ سو ایزی یت سو ڈفیکلٹ مائی برادر May Allah grant us that ability. So finally, this companion comes to the Prophet ﷺ in the masjid. And then uh, he comes and asks the same question. Abu Bakr and Umar don't want to know more. Ibn Kathir speaks about the whole narration. He said, she walked in. I fell on her. I did this. I feel guilty. I feel, you know what, uh, uh, remorseful about my mistake. And then he came to the messenger ﷺ. And he said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, this is the mistake I have made. This is the mistake I made. And I was talking about that young man, in case you forgot. And, you know, my mom, may Allah grant her goodness and afi and shifa. She always says that, uh, you know, Dikra tu ai wat kare, pachi tu yati ta jai, ne tati ya awe. You know, kem taru magat chale. I said, tamarish dua che biju hu. You know, this is all her duas and her blessings. So this man had phoned me and I tie it up here that... Uh, He says, I committed zina. So I started comforting him. Then he broke down again and he said, I'm sorry to say I committed zina on the 15th night of Shaban. I committed zina on the 15th night of Shaban. Of course, my aim was, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know if he was going to call me back. It was anonymous. So I wanted to leave him on a note of hope. I wanted to leave him on a note of hope. The point I'm saying is that the devil, when he comes back, he comes back very aggressively. He comes back very, very aggressively. And that is why in the Quran and Sunnah, we have not been taught to fight the shaitan. We've been taught prayers to take amnesty by Allah and Allah will blow shaitan for you. That has been the system in the Quran and in the Hadith. There's no way I can fight the devil. Why? And this is mentioned in Tafsir. Because the devil has an upper hand over me. How? The devil can see me and I cannot see him. And when I take refuge by Allah, Allah can see the devil. The devil cannot see Allah. إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ So I said, brother, there is still hope for you. And I must say this again, I must say this again, that from my counseling I have seen, and Allah guide one and all, that the devil makes an attack to commit a wrong. And after you commit the wrong, his attack to make you despondent is greater than his attack to make you sin. The devil comes more aggressive on the element of despondency than he comes on the element of the perpetration of the crime. Why? Because وَكَانَ يَعْقُوبُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ الْيَعْسَ كُفْرٌ Despondency is tantamount to kufr. لَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ Of course we're not advocating. Yesterday I touched on embracing the concession of Islam. And when I say concession, let me qualify the legislated concession of Islam. We're not advocating that, you know what, you just go out of the fold and, and, and you just, you know, uh, do the things out of Islam. No, no. Stay within the boundaries. Stay within the boundaries and embrace the concession. And give hope. Give hope. Musalma ke har firqe ne ek dusre ko kafir kaha. ایک کافر ہی ہے جس نے ہم سب کو مسلمہ کہا مسلمہ کے ہر فرقے نے ایک دوسرے کو کافر کہا ایک کافر ہی ہے جس نے ہم سب کو مسلمہ کہا Today sadly every group in the Muslim calls the next one a disbeliever It's only the disbeliever that says you all are Muslims The disbeliever says your brother here, your brother there He thinks all are one But no, no, that's not my brother That's not my brother Uh, we, we have a different view and a different approach. Allah is the judge. Allah is the judge. I have said this in my talks and I will say it again that if I can be remembered and I ask Allah to, to, to take my words across for three things from all my years of talking, three things if people can remember from me, I'm optimistic that it would be a meaningful legacy and I ask Allah to guide me. The first out of the three that I say to people is give charity every day of your life. 
Give charity. Every year when the students graduate and they ask the Asatidha for advice, I give them the same advice. I said, this is my humble thinking. Everybody has a mawqif and a view and a stance and, 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 and a particular approach. And you know what each person has seen the help of Allah in different things. I have this year. Give charity every day of your life. Number two, serve your parents diligently, actively and passionately. I was saying to my sons two days ago, I said to them, that, uh, you know, sometimes the kids say, no, oh, I didn't mean to not listen. Oh, I didn't realize you were talking. Oh, I, I, I wasn't sure. So I said, no, that's not right. In, 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 there's a book on Bad Nadri Ka Ilaj, right? Uh, the harms of the abuse of sight. And in that, there's one Ibarat, and I just love this. They say, Adam qasd nazar kafi nahi hai. Qasd adam nazar zaruri hai. Oh my word. Oh my Allah. Our deen is so beautiful. Our deen. I haven't started. Uh, it is insufficient to say I did not intend roaming my gaze. You need to consciously intend not to roam your gaze. So I just came outside and, oh, I didn't realize. No, no, you got to kind of program yourself before you exit, alert yourself and get yourself in gear that, wait, hang on, I'm going out. I'm going to be potentially predisposed and exposed. So Adame Qaste Nadar, these wordings are just profound. Adame Qaste Nadar, kafi nahi. Qaste Adame Nadar, zaruri. It is imperative that you consciously make a calculated intention. So I said to my children, I said, one is a casual obedience and one is I go to sleep consciously. Consciously, I need to uh, serve my parents. My mom gave me a task today. My dad told me, Allah is my witness. And I used to say it in the class to the students as well. Now, Ustad gave you, write it down. Read Turakat Salah. Say, Inshallah. Ya Allah, let me not forget this. Make it a, make it a, a matter of importance in your life. Then Allah will give you tawfiq. Then Allah will present you with opportunities. At the right time, you will be there and you will take du'as. And that is the only thing that will keep you going. That is the only thing that will keep you going. Anyway, uh, coming back to what I was uh, hoping to have spoken. Uh, and that is on the initial sentiments of the need to hasten. Don't delay. Like, do it now. Do it now. Uh, you need to pray, leave the kitchen and get in and, 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 and offer your prayer, offer your salah. Get it done, get it done. Uh, how often when a person passes away, if you don't honor the moment to attend the funeral, funeral, you never get the opportunity to subsequently go to the house. You know, it's either that moment. And I say to people, when you're at the graveyard, respect the disease because this is the only time, if it's not a relative, but just a neighbor, friend, colleague, associate, that you might consciously be attending his funeral. Thereafter, by the way, you might attend. But to honor him, which is one of the haq on a believer, this is the time at his funeral. And if you can't devote those few moments exclusively to him, then when will you ever do it? Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu anhu said, لَوْ أَنِّي أَكُونُ كَمَا أَكُونُ فِي حَالٍ مِّنْ أَحْوَالِ الثَّلَاثَةَ لَكُنْتُ بِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَا شَكَكْتُ فِي ذَلِكَ حِينَ أَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَحِينَ يَسْمَعُهُ يُقْرَ وَإِذَا شَهِدْتُ خُطْبَةَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا شهدت جنازة. If I can sustain my spiritual uh, ability which I enjoy on three instances, if I can perpetually sustain it, I'm optimistic Allah will give me Jannah. So he obviously had an ideal. We don't have any ideal level. We could say in Ramadan, we're better, but it's still not ideal. At the Kaaba, we're better, but it's still not ideal. Uh, on the night of Qadr, we're better, but it's still not. I can't say that if I'm like that all my life, because that's still not the ideal. And which were the three instances? Uh, when I recite Quran or I listen to Quran being recited. It is very painful when Quran is being played out, you are ignoring it. And, and only if you could understand what was being said in the Quran at that time. And then the second is when I attend the sermon of the Prophet ﷺ. And the third is when I attend a funeral. I'm like in reflection mode. I'm in introspection mode. And I'm looking and I'm observing what they say. A graveyard is a silent place with a loud message. A silent place with a loud message. So um, we, we stocked up and we've done, you know, quickly and urgently and desperately. It's urgent. We need to start getting our amal in place so that when it's time to meet our Allah, it's all in a clean slate. So here I share with you the incident of uh, Umair bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu. Umair radiallahu anhu. 
so Umar radiyallahu anhu was a very very pious and uh, noble individual the people of hims hims uh, was known for their complaining nature that anybody who would govern them would not last there right kana ahlu hims kathir shikwa they always would moan and groan. Like you have many masjids also. Any imam that comes there, unfortunately, the poor person, he's, he's blown away. You know, I often use this ayah in a different context. But you'll find sometimes people will say, oh, we're looking for an imam. And oh, wallah, we will value him. We will honor him. We will trust him. We will respect him. And then when the imam comes, unfortunately, they are the most to abuse him. And I don't want to generalize. There are times where imam could default as well because people immediately get on the defense here. So I just want to be balanced. But this happens in many instances. And Allah speaks about in a different context, in a different scenario. But he kind of fits the situation that the Meccans prior to the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, if we get a prophet, we will be different. We'll be different. We'll be different. Many a woman would say, I'm not like other women. Huh? I'm not like other women. I, I respect you. I see you. I see my colleagues here in, in the studios are having a chuckle. I consciously omitted their names to avoid implications. Ah, I'm different. I'm different. Okay, let's balance it out. Even husbands, so we are gender neutral in this regard. And uh, there is no sense of bias or prejudice nature. So what they said, oh, if we get a prophet, we'll be different. Oh, this nation belied. That nation did this. Allah referred to the nation of Nuh. Innahum kanu hum adlama wa atgha. La ilaha illallah. Man, I, I just, I'm grateful to Allah for putting these thoughts in my mind. Each nation denied their prophet. But Allah said the nation of Nuh, they were the most arrogant. Why? In Jalalain, it's mentioned because Nuh alayhi salam's lifespan was so long, it was as though he himself was multiple prophets. Nuh alayhi salam's life was so long, it is as though his life itself incorporated few prophets. Or you take it literally that his life was so long that, you know, one is a person didn't listen. You say, hey, my son is not listening for 10 days. Hey, 10 days, bye. Maroto viswara no take on any humberto. My one is 20 years old and he's not listening. So the crime of the latter is more heinous than the former because the same message was echoed to him for 20 years. Nuh alayhi salam echoed his message for 950. That wasn't his lifespan. In the Hashia of Jalalain, it's written, he was uh, 40 when he got Nabuwat. He then gave Dawud for 950 years. Then came the floods and then he was given a, life, a lifespan of 60 years thereafter. A lifespan of 60 years thereafter. So that takes his age to 1050. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا هُمْ أَضْلَمَ وَأَطْغَى وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَةَ أَهْوَى فَغَشَّاهَا مَا غَشَّى My brother, my sister, if I can tell you something is... Oh, let me complete those three advisors. You see, I didn't even complete that. Oh, I gave two. And the third one that I say, don't judge anyone. Don't judge anyone. People go on the defense and what are you... I'm not advocating anything. I'm saying... The monopoly, the control is in Allah's hands. He will decide who... I say to people, Allah knows your circumstances. Allah understands your situation. You don't have to give Allah an explanation. Sometimes your parents interpret your action as disobedience. But you know you did not disobey your parent. Your ustad interprets it as disrespect. But you know you are not disrespectful. Now my message to you is don't argue or counter argue or justify. Just let time pass and Allah will let you shine. Don't go and say, no, mommy, that's very wrong of you. You're accusing me. No, what she did was wrong. You just be silent. But that's the challenge. You need to be silent because it's your mom. You, and you don't have to be disturbed or perturbed by the supposed curse at that time. Why? Because you know you are not guilty and you're dealing with Allah. You don't have to give Allah an explanation. You don't. Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. Allah knows what's in your heart. Chapter close. If you're noble, he's most forgiving. So that's my third. Don't judge. Don't judge. There's just too many stories that I can share with you in my travels of people who, how things change, how things change. I've mentioned this often that I spoke at an event in Trinidad in the Caribbean and there was a brother that very passionately told me I want you to meet someone I want you to meet someone I said okay 
tomorrow, bring him to the hotel, bring him to the conference. He couldn't come, I couldn't meet. And then uh, the time passed and the days lapsed and now I'm flying back and you get into the airport. And he called me again and he said, Sheikh, Imam, you didn't meet. I said, you know, sorry, can you bring him to the airport? He said, no. I said, uh, can you explain your passion why you really want me to meet him? He said, you know what? He brought me into the fold of Islam and he left Islam. So we don't know what's going to happen to us. We don't know what's going to happen to us. I just don't know what is going to be my condition. I just don't know what is my condition at which point and how is Allah going to take my soul? Allah told the Prophet ﷺ, listen my brother, listen my sister. وَلَئِنْ شِئْنَا لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَلَئِنْ شِئْنَا لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ بِهِ عَلَيْنَا وَكِيلًا إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِّن رَبِّكَ إِنَّ فَضْلَهُ كَانَ عَلَيْكَ كَبِيرٌ وَلَا إِنْ شِئْنَا And if perchance we wanted were and la certainly in if شِئْنَا we intended la absolutely with certain نَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we could have definitely seized the revelation we gave you. We could have seized it. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِّن رَبِّكَ But it's the grace, the boon, the mercy of your Lord that it allowed revelation to continue upon you. إِنَّ فَضْلَهُ كَانَ عَلَيْكَ كَبِيرًا Indeed, the grace of Allah upon you is immense. What's mentioned under this ayah in Bayan al-Quran? فِيهِ أَشَدُّ الْخَوْفِ فِيهِ أَشَدُّ الْخَوْفِ عَلَى سَلْبِ مَا رُزِقَ أَحَدٌ مِنَ النِّسْبَةِ وَالْكَمَالِ كَيْفَ وَلَا أَحَدْ أَعَزُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ حَبِيبِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَلَمَّا خُوطِبَ بِهَذَا فَأَيْنَ غَيْرُهُ مِنْهُ In this ayah, Allah gives off a stern warning. فِيهِ أَشَدُّ الْخَوْفِ Great fear, great fear. عَلَى سَلْبِ مَا رُزِقَ أَحَدْ مِنَ النِّسْبَةِ وَالْكَمَالِ that Allah can seize and Allah can snatch and Allah can withhold whatever ability. My brother, your tahajjud is not on your accord. My sister, your fasting is not on your accord. By Allah, the speaking of minds is not on my accord. I have every reason to disqualify me from addressing you. And I don't have one reason to be addressing you other than the grace, kindness and mercy of my Allah. Why not? When Allah addressed his Habib sallallahu alayhi and told his Habib, I can take it. When Allah told his most beloved, then where does Zayd Amar Bakr feature? Where does the rest of the world feature? Who am I? What am I? Nothing, nothing. Allah can strike. Anyway, I was saying to you that uh, the Kuffar of Makkah, they said that, uh, yeah, if we get a prophet, oh, we will be unique. We will be outstanding. We will do the best. Uh, we will do the best and we will show him and honor him and revere him and respect him. Yeah, we will be the most noble of nations. We will not belie him. We will not oppose him. And what did Allah say? فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ نَذِيرٌ مَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا نُفُورًا When the Prophet came to them and the warner came, it only increased them in rebellion. It only, وَلَيَزِيدَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ تُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا So anyway, the people of Hims, let me try and make progress with this incident because time is really running out and many people would want to spend the night in ibadah, etc. So they were very uh, by nature كان أهل حمص كثير الشكوى فما جاءهم من وال فما جاءهم من وال إلا وجدوا فيه عيوبا وأحصوا له uh, وأحصوا له ذنوبا that whenever a governor came they would say oh he's nasty he's evil he's got issues this person is like, never happy never happy my brother if you have the attitude of never being happy then I'm afraid you'll be miserable and you'll make those around you miserable. But if you're a person who is happy by little things, then you'll give off positive uh, energy. People who get happy quickly and generous, who are generous, they are happy and they make people happy. And people who are never happy and are misers, they're miserable and they make people miserable.
Travel with a miser, phew, that's the worst journey. Even if it's around the corner. And travel with the generous or be the generous person. Zadur Raqib. Umm Salma radiallahu father was known as Zadur Raqib. Provision for the traveler. لِأَنَّ الرُّكْمَانِ لَا تَتَزَوَّدْ إِذَا قَصَدَتْ مَنَازِلَهُ أَوْ صَارَتْ فِي صُحْبَتِهِ Because if you were traveling with him or you went to visit him, it's ideal to forget your wallet. That is how generous he was. And some people when they travel with you, you take two wallets with. Yeah, you take your debit and your credit card. You don't use the credit facility. Let me qualify that. But you keep it because, you know, oh, you, you, you know that one. Yeah, he said, how are you feeling? Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm missing two grand. I'm missing two grand. I'm not feeling two grand. I'm not feeling two grand. Meaning two thousand missing. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling two grand. I'm not feeling two grand. This is like a Ijaz joke, eh? Probably if he's listening there at home. Yeah. It's just if you're listening. And, and anyway, uh, so the people of Hims, the people of Hims, they had this. Uh, how are we? For, what time are we? We good still? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward all our brothers and sisters for listening. So they were notorious in complaining. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu decided to send to them uh, Umair ibn Sa'ad radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu said, فَبَعَثَ إِلَيْهِمْ رَجُلًا لَا يَرَوْنَ فِي سِيرَتِهِ مَغْمَزَ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِيهِ عُيُوبَ Because Umair ibn Sa'ad was a man of, of, of stature. He was a man of caliber. And uh, subhanallah, I don't like to digress, but the thoughts of Quranic ayat just keep on persisting. And I credit that to Allah. Look, look at this deduction from Quran, my word. I cannot thank Allah. I cannot thank Allah for allowing me the opportunity to study Quran and teach Quran for whatever years Allah graciously allowed me. And I ask you to make dua to Allah that Allah never deprives me. Allah never snatches this away because Allah can take anything at any time. Allah can take anything at any time. Allah is in absolute control. Allah is in absolute control. This is the theme of the Quran. A believer constantly fears and a munafiq feels constantly that he's secured. المؤمن جمع إحسانا وشفقة والمنافق جمع إساءة وأمنا. So look at this verse of the Quran in Surah An-Nisa in the rules of the wealth and the assets of orphans and look at the deduction لا إله إلا الله. So Allah says ولا تؤت السفهاء أموالكم التي جعل الله لكم قياما. My Allah, my Allah, this can only be your speech, my Allah. This can only be your speech. May Allah give us the connection of Quran. وَلَا تُعْتُوا السُّفَهَا And do not give the... Uh, Sufaha literally translated as, as foolish, as naive. Here it means those that are not competent. Those that are not competent. The non-competent uh, ones. In other words, in orphans, they've grown up. But they're not yet competent, skilled, methodical. They don't understand figures. They don't. They are not responsible enough. Listen to this carefully. And do not give those that are not competent, those that are naive, foolish, still haven't matured. Amwalakum, your wealth. It's actually their wealth. But Allah said your wealth. I just want to deduce two things from these two words. Sufaha and amwalakum. Don't give these orphans who are not yet matured their wealth, but Allah didn't say their wealth. Allah said, Amwalakum, your wealth. Ja'alallahu lakum qiyama. has two translations. One, that Allah has made you a guardian over. Under this ayah, it is written, Fihi, it releases a hint, Adamu tafweezi shay'in ila ghayri ahlihi. What do we learn from this ayah? Don't hand over something to someone who's not deserving, even if it's his own. فيه عدم تفويض شيء إلى غير أهله ويقاس عليها المناصب. And you can extend the implications of that ayah to position, power, and authority. Don't yeah, Allah is saying don't give them their money, which is their own. They're not yet right. So now, today, unfortunately, how often positions are just uh, distributed to people who. Um, have everything to disqualify them than to qualify them. It's ironical, it's ironical how people scrutinize the Imam if he is the deserving candidate. And when you look at those who adopt, 
the screening process and scrutinize who were never subjected to any scrutiny themselves, then I'm afraid that, you know what, it's, it's, it's scary to say anything beyond. It's scary to say anything beyond. So Allah says, so in this it releases a hint, Adamu tafwidi shay'in ila ghayri ahli. Right? This is their wealth, but they're not yet right, so don't give it to them. And then the ulama say, why did Allah say amwalakum? But it, it was amwalahum. It was the wealth of the orphans, but Allah said your wealth. Why? وَأَضَافَ الْمَالَ إِلَىٰ ضَمِيرِ الْمُخَاطَبِ Oh man, Quran. I, 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 I don't know. Sometimes I, I wonder if people understand what I'm saying. I, 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 like, like, I, I, I don't know how to tell the world what the Quran is. I, 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 I lose myself. I lose myself. Like I want to jump and scream and say, brothers and sisters, understand what Allah gave us. So they dissect everything. Allah is saying the wealth of the orphans. But Allah didn't say, Amwalahum. Allah said, Amwalakum. Wa awafa dhamiri ila al mukhatab. And the pronoun was directed to the present. Like, Amwalakum. Why? To release a hint and impress upon you that protect their, your, their wealth. Ka annakum tahfaduna amwalakum. Like how you take care of your own wealth. So the indication in the adoption of a direct address is to release a hint that you know what, it is their wealth, but protect it like how you protect your own. When Allah spoke about talaq, and Allah said that uh, in, in talaq, in, 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 in uh, idda, in raj'i, the woman don't take her out of the house. Right? Look, look at the deduction of the Mufassirin. You've given, you know, by circumstances you had to give talaq. But what did Allah say? إِذَا طَلَّقُتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ وَأَحْسُ الْعِدَّةِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ لَا تُخْرِجُوهُنَّ مِن بُيُوتِكُمْ مِن بُيُوتِهِنْ لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله Allah said, after the talaq, don't drive her out from her house. I can see my sisters jumping, right? <laughs> I, can, I'm, I don't want to go into a dust lesson here. But Allah said, hinna, to say that give her that sense of freeness, independence, you know, authority in that house. You might have the title deeds and you might be owning the house. But Allah made nisbet of, of the house towards her as well. After all, it is a woman who makes a house into a home. After all, it's a woman. And may Allah bless my wife. I, I've said this and she, each time she gets shy and she says, why do you mention this? And I believe it's the opportunities that Allah gives me for me to thank her sincerely. For me to thank her sincerely for being the mother she is, for being the spouse she is. May Allah reward her handsomely. And may Allah reward all our mothers out there and spouses out there. We acknowledge them. I always say, and to my sisters, I say to you, the formula to sustain any relationship is mutual complementation. If you mutually complement, you water in the relationship. And if you devoid of it, the days are short. Employer, employee, each one compliment. You're an amazing boss. You're an amazing staff. You're an amazing neighbor. You're a lovely neighbor. You're an awesome partner. You're a lovely. Express it. Verbalize it. I say this at home. Express it. Humans by nature are designed to be appreciated. This is how we are. This is how we are. You don't see you go for these dolphin shows, other creatures as well. You make the dolphin do any trick, you pop a fish. You make the dog do anything, you pop something here. You want anybody, you need to pop, you need to drop, you need to acknowledge. Give it, give it, acknowledge, praise. Don't hold back, give something, surprise, and you'll see the good. Anyway, these people, uh, so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu sends uh, Umar ibn Sa'ad radiallahu anhu to him, right? Uh... So, نَثَرَ كِنَانَةَ الرِّجَالِهِ Look at this ta'beer also, right? نَثَرَ كِنَانَةَ الرِّجَالِهِ وَعَجَمَ عُودَانَهَا عِيدًا عِيدًا عُودًا عُودًا فَلَمْ يَجِدْ خَيْرًا مِنْ عُمَيْرِ بْنِ سَعْدٍ So he tells Umair رضي الله عنه, go. So Umair رضي الله عنه comes to... Okay, okay. I've got my first note uh, to start say. I, I, it's, it's good you alerted me that I got to kind of start my uh, descent, you know? Uh, literally, because uh, I was telling somebody we're having the pangs of aviation at the moment. <laughs> Those that are globetrotters and uh, seasoned travelers, you know what? Uh, it's like uh, wondering when you'll board the flight again. May Allah grant easy. Ease, inshallah. I mean. Okay, so uh, yeah, coming back to that incident here of uh, Umar ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu. So he arrives in Hims. He arrives in Hims, right? Lamma wasala Umar ibn Sa'd Hims, da'an nasa ila salatin jami'ah. He calls people to offer prayer. 
And then he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, Inna al-Islam hasnun hasinun, wa babun wathiqun, wa hasnu al-Islami al-adlu, wa babuhu al-haqqu. Fa'idha dukka al-hasnu, wa huttima al-babu, ustubiha hima hadha al-deen. Oh man, these people, every word was so profound, voluminous. He said, Inna al-Islam hasnun mani'un. Islam is a strong thought, wa babun wathiqun. And it is uh, like, a, you know, a, 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 a powerful door. It's a mighty door. It's a great gate. It's strong. It's resilient. وَحِسْنُ الْإِسْلَامِ الْعَدْلُ And the fort of Islam is justice. وَبَابُهُ الْحَقُّ And the gateway to this justice is the truth. فَإِذَا دُكَّ الْحِسْنُ If the fort is demolished. فَإِذَا دُكَّ الْحِسْنُ وَحُطِّمَ الْبَابِ And the door is broken. Ustubiha hima ha the deen, then the sanctity of this deen will be violated. Hima refers to a meadow. Allah wa inna li kulli malikin hima, Allah wa inna hima Allahi maharimu. That every uh, king has his private and exclusive meadow. And the meadow of Allah is that which Allah has made forbidden and unlawful, etc. And then he said, Wa inna al Islama ma yazalu mani'an. Wa inna al Islama ma yazalu mani'an mashtadda sultan. And Islam always remains strong as long as the ruler and the governor was responsible and strong. وَلَيْسَتْ شِدَّةُ السُّلْطَانِ ضَرْبًا بِالصَّوْتِ وَلَا قَتْلًا بِالسَّيْفِ وَلَكِنْ قَضَاءً بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَخْضًا بِالْحَقِّ لا إله إلا الله What did he say? وَلَيْسَتْ شِدَّةُ السُّلْطَانِ ضَرْبًا بِالصَّوْتِ وَلَا قَتْلًا بِالسَّيْفِ وَلَكِنْ قَضَاءً بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَخْضًا بِالْحَقِّ that justice, as long as the governor, the ruler, the top that were ruling and governing us, we had people to look forward to. We had people to look forward to and um, whose presence kept fitting away. How many people you seen this elderly scholar passed away and then you see the ummah gripped with another fitna. Somebody else passes away and the ummah gripped with another fitna. It's happening. So what is the strength? What is the strength of Islam? It is justice. My brother in one word, justice. Justice, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhada alilla o you who believe, uphold justice. Shuhada be witnesses, lilla to Allah. Walau ala anfusikum, even if you have to say you are wrong, confess you're wrong. Awil walidain, ay law kanatil mashhud alay. Even if you have to say your parents are wrong, be honest and candid. In yakun ghaniyan aw faqeeran fallahu aw la bihima. Don't be intimidated by the affluence of the wealthy and don't let empathy grip you by the poverty of the poor. He's so poor, if I give justice, he'll lose the little he have. He's so rich, if I expose him, my perks will be compromised. فَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْهَوَىٰ You can take one ayah and sit one whole week and open ten tafasir. It will answer all the aspects of your life. What's mentioned under this ayah in Bayan al-Quran? لا إله إلا الله دَلَّ لِعُمُومِهِ على عدم الاستنكاف عن قبول الحق ولو عن من هم أدنى منه وعن الاعتراف بخطئه. The ayah releases a hint that people of justice will not find it below their dignity to accept the truth, even if it comes from someone younger or inferior to them. دل لعمومه على عدم الاستنكاف عن قبول الحق ولو عن من هو أدنى. Your son told you, your child told you, your brother told you, right? Common issue with couples, the problem with you is you can't be told. I can't be told, but can you be told, my love? I'm asking. No, not my wife. I'm just like generally, no, no, I'm not. Uh, anyone, that's the issue. Neither of them can be told. Nobody can be told. That's the challenge in life, right? And I always say the worst thing that can happen to someone is that nobody can tell you. Even if your spouse you don't disagree with his or her sentiments. It's healthy for your ego that someone is challenging you on your, on your views. When you reach a point where you become unilateral and independent and self-sufficient, then that is the recipe for disaster. Your kids, you dare tell me. Partner, you dare open your mouth. And the employees don't have any choice. Nobody, nobody can tell you. Then that is, Allah says in the Quran, that's only Allah. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون only Allah cannot be questioned. Besides Allah, everybody. So my parents need to tell me, my spouse will tell me, my teachers will tell me. But when we reach these points in our life where nobody tells us, I'm afraid. Because nobody can see your own wrong. 
my 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 teacher used to say this year uh, that uh, and I and I, I hate to use the expression but just to contextualize it is that if a next person releases flatulence or passes wind the stench can be quite uh, nauseating and could be quite offensive and you could be in the loo and passing your stools and defecating and you never get offended by the odor you never heard a person spraying while he's relieving himself excuse me right or he needs to ventilate he needs to ventilate when somebody else exited the loo why because we are so tolerant towards our own we're so tolerant towards our somebody has to tell us how we sound somebody has to tell us and i need to be told i need to be told my, my, today my dad dropped us a message and he alerted us and may Allah bless him and reward him you know on the family chats he constantly advises us and it's important I'm, I'm a, I'm, I remain a child to my parents I remain a student to my teachers may Allah give me people say make dua Allah keep us humble I said that's a claim of humility say make dua Allah make us humble if you say make dua Allah keep us humble that means you're saying you what they say in English humility is strange just when you claim it you lost it just when you said I'm humble, poops, it's gone. So it's, it's delicate now. My time is really moving away. So, uh, uh, that uh, that a, a, a just person will have the muscle and the clout to listen from anyone. I have heard, I have heard. You, 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 you hear the political statements when, when the head of state makes a mistake then uh, it's, 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 it's uh, very circumspect and it is very euphemistic. Um, yeah, we had our meeting and we've uh, come to realize that the cabinet has made some mistakes. The cabinet has made some mistakes. Wow. So nobody has the courage to say, well, hang on. You know what? I have erred in my capacity. Uh, the board of staff, the cabinet, the head. Nobody can say, I erred, I erred. So the ayat releases a hint that a just person will be bold to say, I erred. Omar, 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 Omar ibn Khattab. You know, don't get me started on the tale of Omar radiallahu anhu. He could stand up in Masjid al-Nabawi and say, Bu'san li Omar. Woe be to you, O Omar. Kam qatalta min awlad al-Muslimin. You legislated that an allowance will only be given from the state to a child that has been weaned off. How many mothers in trying to secure this allowance have weaned their children off prior to the duration of two years? So your short-sightedness in this legislation has actually deprived so many children of the milk of their mother. By default, you've killed them. Omar rebuking himself in public. Radiyallahu anhu, radiyallahu anhu. Then he writes, and I, I don't even go into this here, the scholars can understand it. لا كعلماء القشر ومشائخ الرسم الذين يموهون أباطيلهم ويؤولون أقاويلهم وحملهم على ذلك كبرهم. Oof. You know what he says? I'll just give you the translation of one. Hakim al-Umma under this ayah, he talks of علماء القشر. Qishr in Arabic means the, the peel of the fruit, not the actual fruit. So he says, those that have the courage to accept their wrong, they are true scholars. And those who don't have the courage, they are the peel. لا كعلماء القشر ومشائخ الرسم يموهون أباطيلهم Who will distort their view to justify it and it is nothing but pride. So may Allah give us the ability to accept. Anyway, Sayyidina Umair ibn Sa'ad radiallahu anhu spends time there and then قضى عمير بن سعد حولا كاملا في حمص لم يكتب خلاله لأمير المؤمنين كتابا ولم يبعث إلى بيت مال المسلمين من الفيء درهما ولا دينارا فأخذت الشكوك تساور عمر رضي الله عنه إذ كان شديد الخشية على ولاته من فتنة الإمارة فلا معصوم عنده غير رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم A year passed, he didn't hear from Umar ibn Sa'ad so Umar رضي الله عنه said hey, I need to check on him, I need to keep tabs on him because Umar had a very very stringent eye, he had a very very stringent and I was watching everybody, what they up to, what's happening. So he wrote to him. He said, uh, Umar likatibihi, he said to his scribe that uh, write uh, and tell him, kitabu Umar, that when you receive this note, then leave Hims and come away to Medina. So when Umar ibn Sa'ad in Hims received this letter, he uh, jiraba zadihi. I mean, for them it was simple traveling. Take one bag, take your stuff, take your container and off you go. That was life, right? Zindagi halki pulki si hai. Sara boj to khai shoka hai. Life is very manageable. The real burden are our desires. Right? Life is so easy. The, the whole issue is our desires, man. It's this and it's that and la ilaha illallah. Fa akhada jiraba zadihi. Okay, inshallah. We'll, we'll, we'll roll it off. 
He took his uh, provisions and he went. And then, long story short, because I've been given uh, multiple warnings here. Initially, I was told the night is open and unending. But now, you know what? I've been flagged down to say, well, uh, time is really running out. So he took his provisions. He took his staff. He had a little bowl. He put that on and off he went. He came to Medina. And uh, over the period of time walking, he was thin, weak, lame, uh, you know, frail. And so when Umar radiallahu said, فَدُهِشَ الْفَارُوقُ مِنْ حَالَةِ Generally, if a person is given a post, he'll get more healthy and he'll get more wealthy because of perks, comforts, luxuries, uh, and, and all the other related uh, muraat that people will experience. So Umar radiallahu said, مَا بِكَ يَا Umar, Umar, what happened to you? He said, مَا بِمِنْ شَيْءٍ Nothing. أَنَا صَحِيحٌ مُعَافًا بِحَمْدِ اللَّهِ I'm healthy, I'm good. أَحْمِلُ معي الدنيا كلها. I practically own the whole world. So Umar radiallahu says, I thought probably he brought handsome wealth for Baytul Mal. He said, Ma ma'aka, what do you have? He said, Ma'i uh, jirabi, but wada'atu fihi ta'ami. I have my provision in that is my food. Wa ma'i qas'ati, akulu fiha. And then I have my platter in which I, I, I eat. And then I have my water bag I use for wudu and for drinking. Thumma inna dunya kullaha tab'un li mata'i hadha. Wow. He said, Oh, Umar, everything beyond this is just a more elaborate version to fulfill the same needs. Wow. Wow. Oh, Umar, anything beyond this, I walked and came, I have my staff, I have my water bag, I have my, my bowl and my utensil, and I have my food. Anything beyond this is a more colorful, flamboyant, opulent version of this year. That's it. That's it. Right? You fly economy, business first class. Everyone has a platter. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, the cutlery is different. Yeah, the glass is different. Yeah, the linen is different. But they eat in also. They eat in also, or, or we eat in, whoever is, whichever class, I'm not saying I'm in anyone, you know, I'm just saying each class is accordingly. It's just a more um, modified version of the same thing. It's a modified version of the same thing. You know, that person says, my dad drives an a old BM. So he says, he's outdated. He says, no, he's in style from those years. <laughs> My dad drives the old BM. So he said, oh man, he's orthodox, he's primitive, he's outdated. He said, no, he's in style from those days. Anyway. So Umar radiallahu said, Jaitamashian, you came walking. It's quarter past nine, we got to wrap up, right? Yeah. Jaitamashian, you came walking. He said, yes. Were you not given a state conveyance? Were you not given a state conveyance? He said, They didn't offer, I didn't request. So he said, ma uh, ma'aka li baytil mal. What wealth do you have for the baytul mal? He said, lam ati bi shay'in. I don't have anything. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, why? He said, lamma wasaltu ila hims. When I got to hims, jama'atu sulaha'a ahliha. I gathered the pious people. And I said, I don't want to taint myself in money matters. Wa wallaytuhum jama'a fay'ihim. I said, you gather the money. We'll sit down and make mashara and you dispense it. So I will oversee, but I won't touch a dime. فَكَانُوا كُلَّمَا جَمَعُوا شَيْئًا إِسْتَشَرْتُهُمْ فِيهِ وَوَضَعْتُهُ فِي مَوَاضِعِهِ We would collect the money and then we would dispose of it. So Umar radiallahu anhu then said to his scribe, جَدِّدْ عَهْدًا لِعُمَيْرٍ Okay, tell Umair we extend in his uh, uh, period of rule in office for another year. Nowadays when the person is sworn in, he offers himself already. You know, that's, that's become synonymous, you know, and we're from the African continent. Uh, it's become synonymous where a person volunteers. A person volunteers. Why? Because today it's, 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 it's my pleasure and it's, it's, it's not appreciating the responsibility about it. So he said, Jaddid ahdan li Umair. Renew our contract with Umair and he's going to be in He said, Hey hata, hey hata, lan a'mala laka wala li ahadin ba'dak. Oh, Umar, you can pass that post on to someone else. I'm done to be a ruler. I won't take the post under your rulership or anyone else. Umar ila Medina. He said, can I retire in one of the villages of Medina? So Umar radiallahu said, go. But Umar had a very watchful eye radiallahu He had a very, very stringent eye. لم يمضي على ذهاب عمير إلى قريته وقت طويل حتى أراد عمر أن يستوثق صاحبه. So he went, then Umar said, is this man really pious or is he plain pious? Can you imagine Umar checking it? Because today, no, 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 brother, you know, I'm fasting. Oh, Allah, the man is fasting. Man is fasting. I told you the one brother said, the man lied to me holding the cloth of the Kaaba. He said, we struck the deal holding the cloth of the Kaaba. Around the Kaaba we held and that's where he struck the deal. 
And then he further elaborated on his piety. These were his words. He said his trouser was not above his ankle, was below his knee. You know, to give off an external. And I don't want to go into this here, but let me say this. One is you promise and subsequently you lie. And one is at the time you pledge, you know you're going to lie. Allah said such a person must fear he will die without Iman. And you can read this in Ma'riful Quran in Surah An-Nahl. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخَلًا بَيْنَكُمْ فَتَزِلَّ قَدَمٌ عَنْ مَحَجَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ in Jalalain. Your foot will slip away. May Allah, in other words, when you sign in the document, at that time you intend him to lie. The only purpose of the oath was to deceive and to hoodwink him and to put wool over his eyes. So he went away. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, uh, called one of his reliable persons, يُقَالُ لَهُ حَارِثِ He said, انطلق يا حارث. Harith, go to this place here. فَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ عَاثَارَ نِعْمَةٍ فَعُدْ وَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ حَالًا شَدِيدَةً فَأَعْطِهِ هَذِهِ الدَّنَانِيرِ You go there, camouflage, and say, you're looking for this man, Umar bin Sa'ad. Uh, and if you see the man, he's soft, and he's comfortable, and he's living nice, and everything, then uh, you know what? Uh, you, 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 you just come away. And if you see he's in poverty, then you, you give, uh, give this amount of money. Today, unfortunately, there's no shortage of, of fraudsters there was one person who used to claim to be an Amil. You know what? Anytime you phone him, he, he's answering the call by reciting a verse to tell you he's reading. So when, you, when, when the phone call reads, then, then as you answer, وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكَ جِي, جِي. Now why do you need to tell me you're reading? The next time you phone, it's another ayah. It's another ayah to tell me how much you read in Quran. لا إله إلا الله I mean, look at the eye of Umar. We spoke about not giving people their own wealth who are not of age. Today, unfortunately, it's a sad reality. It's a painful thing. You know what? Those holding offers on a micro level, not even on the upper level political, it's scary. It's scary. I keep on telling people, we're living in a world, keep safe distance. Keep safe distance. You get any close, the stench will kill you. The stench will kill you. Don't get too close to anybody. You're going to be disillusioned. I was speaking to a very prominent scholar today before coming on and he was telling me I'm so disillusioned. And I, I couldn't believe it. He said, make me marf. I, I said, what are you telling me? He said, yes, I'm so disillusioned at the disunity of the ummah. And I said, no, man, you are my senior and our senior. And please, you know, it's a blessed night and focus and all that. He said, I'm, I'm so consumed about the crisis of the ummah. Anyway, this person comes there. He asks, where does the Umar ibn Sa'ad say? So they say he stays there. So he stayed there three days. He said, I came from Medina. Can I stay? He said, yeah come home three days every day gave him little basic bali somebody came and he said brother i know you're staying by umair but umair is one of the poorer houses in our community uh, and the food he's giving you is the only food they have but he won't tell you so maybe you want to stay by me he said when i heard this i took out the hundred dinars and i dropped it and off i left so he said mahadi what's this dinars what's all this about so he said, Ba'atha biha ilayka Amiru al Mu'mineen. Umar radiallahu anhu send this for you. He said, Ruddaha ilay, waqra alayhi salam, wa kullahu la hajati li umayrin. Please take this bag, give it to Umar, give him my salams. Allahumma in Umar, fa inni la a'lamuhu illa shadid al hubbilak. Allah reward him. I know he's very honest in his love for you. So give him back this dinars. So when his wife overheard this, she said, For Allah's sake, take it. Don't refuse it. We can help poor people. And if you don't want to help, we ourselves are in a crisis. So Harith says, when I heard, When I heard what the wife of Umar, I left the dinars and I left. I came to Medina and I told Umar, he said, what did you say? see? I said, Halan Shadida. The man is living hand to mouth in poverty. He's honest. He's given up a life of, of fame. Well, no fame, but he left rulership. And now he's living hand to mouth and breaking even. So Umar radiallahu said, and you gave him the money? He said, yeah, I gave him the money. So Umar radiallahu said, what do you think he did with the money? Look at the, oh man, now you people don't want to stop me. Here. Oh. So Harith said, I'm clueless. So Umar radiallahu said, I'm, I, I wonder what he did. So he called his scribe, he said, right, can you see what a stringent, you, you know what, what how, how, how matters were being monitored, that who was running the affairs, what type of people were in charge? Uh, and I always say, it can only be taqwa that can police the guardian. Right? Otherwise, who, gu who guards the guardian? Who polices the police? 
I've mentioned this of a report in one of the African states, which I read and I've quoted it widely in many countries, that in that it was found that the anti-corruption unit was the most corrupt. The anti-corruption unit, the, the value for which they stand, that's precisely what they go against. So who monitors you in your house? It's only the fear of Allah. Umar radiallahu anhu said another note and I'll end on this. He told Umar, when you get my note, come back. So the note goes back to him. I said, Amir al-Mu'minin told me, you have to listen to those in charge. He comes immediately to Medina. Umar radiallahu anhu said, uh, you received the money I gave you? He said, yes. He said, wa ma biha? Umar, what you did with it? So Umar radiallahu anhu said, Umar, but you don't have the right to ask me. You gave it, then give it as, and it's done. Why, why are you asking me? He said, uh, I know I don't have a right, but I'm curious to ask you, please. No, Umar was Umar. Who's going to dare challenge Umar radiallahu anhu? He said, uh, and, and, and then subsequently this comes in the narration, لم يبت عمير بن سعد ليلته تلك إلا جعلها في سرر صغيرة ووزعها بين فقراء المسلمين. When he received the money, then he put those coins into small bags and he didn't go to sleep till he distributed all the money without putting a dime in his pocket. What's my message, my sister? He needed it, he didn't take it. He could deliver it the next day, he didn't distribute it the next day, my brother. He hastened, he did it now. I'm asking you, you're not speaking to someone after you end listening to this talk, pick up the call now, pick up the phone now. Phone the person for the pleasure of Allah and apologize. Make the commitment now at this stage. So Umar radiallahu asked him what he did. We stocked up and we panicked by for lockdown. What did Umar ibn Sa'd say? I decided to stock up for the day when my sons and my assets won't help me. So I stocked up for that day. Umar Umar started crying. He said, I swear by Allah, you part of the group that Allah lavishly praises, who give preference to others, even if poverty is their lot. Then he said, give him some food and give him some clothes for the family. He said, We got enough food till tomorrow, so we don't need food. La ilaha illallah. I'll take, I will take the clothing uh, because my wife's clothes are torn and she, she doesn't have adequate to cover herself. So I'll take this. He took it and off he went. It wasn't long after that. Sayyidina Umar got the news that Umar ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu passed away. He cried and he said, What did to? I wish, I wish that the likes of Umar ibn uh, Sa'id was still alive, that people like this I could turn to, to help me in, 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 in addressing the issues and the crisis of the Ummah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all on this blessed night. We ask Allah to bless us with the remaining days of Shaban and that we can spiritually, emotionally prepare ourselves and gear ourselves up uh, to anticipate and to embrace the month of Ramadan. I leave you with these uh, words that the angel announces, Ya baagh al-khayr aqbil, Ya baagh al-khayr aqbil, wa ya baagh al-shar aqsir. Oh, the seeker of good, leap forward, run forward, advance, this is your time, exploit the moment, and oh, the seeker of evil, Halt in your tracks. Stop for a moment. Pause. Abandon your wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to the blessed month of Ramadan. Alleviate the crisis that has gripped the entire world. And let ease and cure prevail over the entire planet. Wa sallillahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.